What's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. All right, and we're going to be talking about Valisinaria. My son Alex here is going to be demonstrating how to propagate this plant while I talk a little bit about it to you and why it would be melting on you. There are some things you could be actually doing that's making it melt, but also understanding what kind of plant it is and its lifespan because plants do have a lifespan. Uh, Alex, if you want to show what you're going to be doing here, uh, they do throw runners. They uh, reproduce a couple ways. They throw runners, which is uh, essentially almost like cloning itself. Um, and then they also are a pollinating uh, plant. So they do grow flowers and they'll cross pollinate a male and a female and make a whole new uh, plant that way. And then obviously duplicating through runners. So, uh, a Velocinaria, if it's melting on you, for one thing, if you just got it, that could be one. Um, it can go either way. You may hear Velocinaria is a, a very easy plant, and it just starts booming and throwing out runners immediately. That's possible, and it completely dying off on you all the way right when you start planting it is possible, too. It just depends on how different your water conditions are from where they came from. Uh, it can trigger a 30-day acclimating period where it just looks stagnant and they're not doing anything before they start reproducing. So don't so don't panic in the beginning if that's going on. Uh, they are a evergreen perennial, so uh, a yearly die-off is also uh, completely common and normal because they're going to. Uh, so depending on what time of the year you got it, you may have got them that were about to be in that process where the old ones are about to keel over die off and then winter blows over and it starts over again like i said it just depends on you know where it came from and how they're growing it you know from there and all of that uh so yeah but they are going to die off on you so um uh also they are extremely heavy root feeders they do prefer dirt above all else uh 90 of their nutrients is taken through uh their roots so if you're using sand or pebbles or something of that nature it's not providing anything. They're, they're going to need root tabs or you putting something in there that's constantly feeding them. Uh, you know, so uh, I've had the best success with them using dirt, capping it with sand. Here, here you are, Alex. You want to show how you're going to separate these? Now, uh, separating them uh, is a good thing to do. Uh, it will trigger them to, grow, to uh, spontaneously throw out uh, multiple runners instead of just throwing one and one and one and one. You snip them all they'll start throwing out several, each one individually. It'll kickstart them all. Um, and they do, when, when they get going, they're going to grow rapidly. Now, there are some things that you could be doing, unbeknownst to you, that you're causing them to die. If you're using a, uh, a an algae treatment to kill um, uh, algae in your tank, it can kill off your valicinaria. Those algae treatments uh, target fast-growing plants. Valicinaria being one of those, uh, you can you can kill it off that way. Also, using any uh, liquid CO2, or if you're using a fertilizer like Flourish Excel, those have uh, bioavailable carbon in there, and that's going to kill off your valicinary Also, they don't like that. Alex, you want to hold this up in the air and show them how you're snipping it. So, when they have runners and going down, you want to snip as uh, close as to the plant as you can and then you keep doing that with all the runners on your valisneria right and as he's continuing to snip he does snip the runner go ahead while, while he's snipping um he does snip the runner completely off that's attached to both plants you don't need it anymore it's going to die you don't need to leave it you know dangling off of there um well, what else do we need to do to this valisneria to make sure that it, it transition it into its new aquarium? Because I am going to spread some of this out. Mine are just now coming back from their yearly die-off. Um, they do it around around winter for me. Um, it, that's the way of things. And it does actually, this plant does actually grow wild out here in Minnesota. Uh, so out in the lakes, right when it starts getting cold, it all massively just dies off and starts coming back in the in the springtime. So what else are we going to do to help this uh, plant that you've you've got on here? We we need to snip the roots and then snip all all snip off all the uh, dead leaves 
on the plants and then right. uh, like throw them away or something. Right, we just toss them out. The stuff that's already dying, you want to go ahead and snip it off. Uh, reason being is because... It can kill the plant. Well, right. The plant is going to start sending a bunch of nutrients to the parts that are dying, um, which is a waste of energy because they can't repair themselves. So you want to eliminate that process by you know just taking off anything that's dead or dying so it can focus on regrowth or sending nutrients to the good part of the plant we trim the roots to initiate uh it opens up the ends of the roots and allows it to start absorbing nutrients very very quickly e even when i'm propagating from one tank to the next i'll treat it like i just got it from you know, from a company, like an online retailer, you know, anywhere. Bo Boost Plants, uh, Aquarium Co-op being a popular one that, that sells it. Um, uh, you want to treat it all the same. Uh, so having patience is also key. Uh, you don't know uh, when you got your plant or how close it is to, you know, it, it naturally dying of its own, you know, volition or time of the year. So uh, if you get your valicinaria, you plant a bunch and it all immediately starts melting on you, that's common too. It may just not like to transition and it's all going to melt and it has to start all over and that's a long process even for a fast growing plant. So a lot of people make the mistake of they just start ripping it all out because they think it's not going to come back. Having patience, you know, if your water conditions are severely different, you know, it, it may all die and you've got to wait a couple months for it to all start kicking back in. Um, if it was doing well and then it's starting to do poorly, it, it needs to be fed. It's probably run out of uh, all the elements and stuff that it needs in your tank. So take those into consideration too. Show them how you're going to um, trim off some of the roots here. And uh, all of this, yes, we would do the same way. So if you got it in a little, you know, plastic cup, uh, you know, with some of that uh, uh, green rock wool in there, I would treat it the same way, you know, propagating or freshly new. Um, and when you have runners, sometimes you'll see it like this. This is starting a new one. This one's still so tiny. I wouldn't um, depend on it starting over by itself. I would still leave it connected until these leaves are a bit longer and can do a little bit better of uh, photosynthesizing. Um, when I when you propagate them, make sure they're you know they they've got they've got some length. To them um, all right and uh, like I said so process of elimination you know if they're all dying at the same time then you probably get it at the time of year uh, from wherever it came from where it's gonna go dormant and go stagnant on you and not do anything or die off um, you, you know so keep that into consideration uh, if none of that's a factor you start thinking about other things what are you dumping in the water what kind of substrate are, are you using, you know, etc. All the things that I've listed, uh, listed, you know, and just know when it, if you're, if you got it and it's starting to go melting on you, all plants can go through that um, slow process, all plants. So no, none are an exception. No matter how easy you hear a plant is, it can come off more difficult than you think it should be. So for, for those reasons, I don't consider any plant easier than the other. Because it depends on how healthy you got it, what time of the year you got it, you know, and uh, just how close your water conditions are close to where it came from. So all of those are a factor. Did you uh, hold some up and snip off uh, tips of the roots there? Show an example of some leaves that you would also snip off. Like this one looks a little dead, so you would probably snip that one yeah, off. Yeah, if it starts turning dark or feeling soft on you, uh, the way you know how healthy it is when you first get it, is the roots will give away a lot. If they're firm to the touch and white, that's a good indication that it's it's in good health when you get it. If you have some roots that are dark and mushy, those need to go completely and just leave the roots that you have that are white and vibrant. All right, so we're gonna start trimming up the rest of these uh, stems, getting them in another tank. And they are a gorgeous plant, by the way. Uh, but yeah, mine are just now recovering from a mass die-off. Um, when I had first started with them, I planted them all at the same time. So they just, you know, at the at the same time, once a year, yes, uh, perennials and evergreen perennials, they have a, a yearly time frame from when they, they keel over and their propagation takes, takes the place of the older one. 
um, or if they're cross-pollinating and starting a new plant from scratch. Those are looking great, man. Thanks. All right, so we're going to make a cut here, start putting these in, in the dirt, and we'll go from there. All right, so we have a final piece of advice when you're planting your valicinaria. Alex, you want to show them uh, how deep they should plant it? You should plant it to about right here. Yeah, don't plant it past that. Yeah. Right? Because... What, what will happen if you if you bury it too deep? It would die. It, it, it's possible you could kill it. You can come sit back down. Thanks for showing everyone, man. Yeah. Um, and uh, we also want to say thank you for... All of the board games. The, we got a couple uh, board games from some of our subscribers. And if you, you've been following us for a while, you know why we put that up there. Um, this summer, through half of it, we're trapped at our house due to my broken leg and foot. And just getting down here can be kind of a challenge. And a couple people have been um, kind of helping us get some entertainment that way. So, you know, just in case we did put our board game wish list, you know, it'll be in the description. Um, no hard feelings either way, <laughs> you know, that's, it's, you don't it's, have to. right. It's, it's, it's for fun and, uh, we do appreciate it. It does give us something to do. Um, and, uh, thank you so much. But besides that, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And if you're not, get up and do something about it. That's right. Well, he said, get up and do something about it and we'll catch you next time. We appreciate you all. Bye. Bye.